Meat. Meat in its nature, when it's broken down to food and taken into the energy cycles in your cell, is very acid forming. Aged cheese. What's the blue in the blue vein cheese? The blue in the blue vein cheese is mold. So all your aged cheese, they have their flavour because of the yeast. Let me put a distinction here between aged cheeses and fresh cheeses. Fresh cheeses are a pH of approximately 7. So there's your feta. And you can get some very nice goat fetters now. When I went down to Tassie to visit my daughter, she gets this goat feta in a little glass jar with oil and herbs and it's very nice. I was at my daughter Julia's in Mildura at the restaurant there. She said, Mum, let me make you a goat cheese and tomato on crusty sourdough bread. I said, ah, goat's cheese. She said, this one's nice. She said, the goat farmers have discovered that Aussies don't like cheese, don't like cheese that tastes like old billy goats. <laughs> so you can get some nice mild ones now. And I think you were telling me, Belinda, about uh, a sheep's cheese. Yeah, you can get some nice sheep's cheeses too. So your feta, your ricottas, your cottage, they are all fresh cheeses, so they don't have the yeast components, so they are in a pH of 7. The biggest concern, of course, about these cheeses is the, is the cows that they come from. But if your family wants to eat cheese, put some feta in the cheese drawer <laughs> and not your aged cheese. And this week, we're showing you how you can make some quite nice cheese alternatives with nuts and seeds. On Saturday, we have lasagna for lunch, and there's a beautiful cheese-type topping, but it's actually made out of nuts and seeds and garlic and different things, and when it cooks, it sets. And caffeine. Oh, by the way, before we move on from cheese, my daughter was in Italy, travelling in Italy, and she said, Mum, they don't put cheese on pizza in Italy. Most Pizzas are really thin and crusty with lots of onion, fresh tomato, fresh herbs, olives. There are some types of pizza that they put a mozzarella on, but it's like a, a fresh light one, very much different to one we have in Australia. It's actually an American thing, putting all this cheese on top of pizza. Caffeine. All your caffeine foods and drinks have an acid effect in the body, as can be seen by where Coke sits. One of the dangers too with caffeine is that it not only has this acid effect, but it leaches calcium and magnesium out of the body. So it can be responsible for magnesium and calcium depletion in the body. Alcohol is not a food, but it creates an acid condition. Tobacco is not a food, but it also creates an acid condition in the body. All other grains... All other legumes and all other nuts create an acid condition. To maintain the cellular pH of 6.5, we need to be having 20 to 30 percent acid forming foods and 70 to 80 percent alkaline forming foods. That ratio will maintain. 6.5 and I'm sure you're not surprised to hear me say that that 20 to 30 percent should come from this little section here but sadly the sick vegetarians that I meet have you met some sick vegetarians I've met some very sick vegetarians and I find that they're eating here and that is creating this high carbohydrate diet that has all the corresponding problems we've been talking about. The diabetes, the weight gain, high carbohydrate, high sugar, feeding the cancer. Overworking the pancreas, more cholesterol is made. What would most Aussies uh, ratio be? 90%, 10%? One of the easiest ways to shift the ratio is to increase the vegetables. Increase the dark, green, leafy vegetables. That's an easy way to do it. You see, it's not that this section is bad. This 
section is very important to keep the balance because you don't want to go too alkaline either. It's all a matter of balance. The meals that we will be serving you will be an illustration of how you can do it. And the easiest way is just to increase your vegetables and your dark green vegetables. You can actually bring some of these grains over to here a little bit more by culturing them in the sourdough method. So when you eat sourdough spelt bread, well, it's already some alkalizing, but it'll shift it up to more alkaline. You can get sourdough wheat bread, sourdough rye bread, sourdough spelt bread. It's just the process by which the bread is made and rises. And traditionally, in Europe, that's the only way bread was ever made. The yeast bread that we get in Australia today, they've hybridised the yeast. They've extracted that yeast strain because they want it to rise in half an hour. It actually causes the grain to explode, whereas the sourdough process, it actually causes the grain to blossom like a flower. And it's much easier to digest. You can eat sourdough bread hot out of the oven, but you cannot eat yeast bread hot out of the oven. It's indigestible. So again, it's going back to the old ways, isn't it? <laughs> the old traditional tried and true ways. I'm going to give everyone a break now. Please have a five-minute break. And when you come back, we're going to look at fantastic fats. <laughs>